like our reputation precedes us. Join the movement as they take on Tokyo. Like me, yeah?
everybody excuse me for a few minutes? I got something I should do. Excuse me, okay? <laughs> See ya. If there's a Beatles in the puppet world, it was it was the Muppets. Jim Henson was uh, very humble himself, uh, very interested in other people, and I never saw him angry. I'd see him upset, but he never reacted against anyone. And one day, when I in the early days.
decided that when television came around, everyone would like to get into television as a puppeteer. And I did. Uh, only eight years after television began, and I had my own puppet show called The Rascal Rabbit Show in Las Vegas, paid $10 a week. And I, uh, I knew it was just the beginning. I think it was probably a terrible show. I didn't even have a monitor. I couldn't see what I was doing. So uh, eventually, I kept doing puppets, and I got, um, that was in 55. I was in the military, got shipped out, so I lost that show. And in 60, I got back into TV in Boston. Jim Henson, who was scouting for somebody to play Big Bird and Oscar, he saw me doing my show, came backstage and said, would you like to join me? I thought that was sort of like, uh, no, I knew who Jim Henson was. The Muppets weren't as big by any means at that time, but I saw them a lot at Ed Sullivan and other shows. And so it was, though, if I was a drummer, if some fellow came along and said, I got a little band from Liverpool. Would you like to be me drummer then? You know, because to me, if, there, if there's a Beatles in the puppet world, it was, it was the Muppets. Jim Henson was a very humble himself, uh, very interested in other people, and I never saw him angry. I'd see him upset, but he never reacted against anyone. And one day, when I, in the early days of the show, I, I wasn't as disciplined as he and Frank Oz were doing, and we were doing the first scenes of Sesame Street, little scenes where with the anything Muppets, where they could put different eyes and different wigs, make a little kid or a dragon, and I kept missing the opening note with the lip sync, and I'd, oh, I'd miss, they'd say, so everyone likes ice cream, you know, it's one of my problems with puppetry. Having trouble with that thing. He walked over to, so we could look at that himself, and he didn't see me walk up behind him, and I heard him quietly say, garbage, garbage. And it went like a knife through me. I said, oh, God. I said, Jim, I'm sorry. I'm going to resign. I'm not good enough to be a Muppeteer. And he turned around and turned and beat right. He said, oh, I wasn't talking about you. He lied. He said, I was, I, my work isn't up to stuff today. And I, I, don't, I didn't think I was doing a very good job. And if you're having trouble with that thing, listen, there's a little tiny bell. If you hear that bell, just open the, the mouth and it will be just right. When we started, you know, uh, Jim uh, told me he wanted me to play two characters when he described the bird. And the bird initially was going to be just a silly, goofy bird. And the other was Oscar the Grouch. Didn't know what I was going to use for the voice. And it was getting down to the nitty gritty. Yes, I have a question. What is it, Oscar? Uh, what is the capital of South Dakota? I had to go across town in a cab. So I hailed a cab and got in. The guy says, we're too Mac. And so I said, wow, what a great voice. And he had a cigar on one side of his mouth, and uh, the voice came out the other like this. And I said, that's perfect. So when I got out of the cab, I kept saying, we're two back, we're two back, because I'm trying to learn to do this voice that I could imitate that very well. It really sounded a lot like that. I had never tried that. I swear if I hadn't looked at him, seeing him talking out of the corner of his mouth in, the, in his rearview mirror, because I'm sitting over there. And uh, so I got Oscar's voice that way. Goodbye, Oscar. What? Why, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. When I do Big Bird, it's it's a lot of fun. And Oscar is too, because it's a totally different experience. After often doing it, the bird all day long, I'll uh, know I've got a few more scenes at the end in there with Oscar. And it's almost therapeutic, because I've been sweet and nice all day. And now Oscar yes, can be one of the most negative, cantankerous characters on television, even though he's on a children's show. And uh, so it's a lot of fun. I never played a character like that. I call him my, um, uh, if you remember Happy Days, and you remember the Fawns. Well, Oscar's my Fawns. He's cool. Hey, you and me, Skinny. <laughs> the one great thing about television is that we're looking, we're, we, we don't look at the puppet. We're looking down at the monitor while we are manipulating the puppet. Everyone has only one eye. It's the camera's lens. If I turn this way, his mouth looks like he's very sad, and I lower his eyes, and, and uh, he can look very unhappy. Or if you tip him forward, his mouth goes up. It really does, you, it's, it's a stiff mouth. It doesn't uh, change like a porpoise. He can't change his expression. Porpoises always look like they're rather pleased. <laughs> and uh, so, but by aiming at them at the camera in a, this way or that, the puppeteer learns to to uh, study the, the the expressions of, and that go along with the emotions that we're portraying. 
Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Don't you love to say that? And it was from a, a woman who had a little four-year-old boy named Christopher. And she heard uh, sniffly. Oh, uh, Big Bird was in a scene where he was the only child around. And so he was very, very sorry for himself because all the kids had gone off to school and he was too young. And so uh, she hears Christopher watching the show and, then, and she was busy in the kitchen. And she hears a little sniffling and crying. And she goes, it's, what's wrong, Christopher? He said, Big Bird is just like me. He's all alone all day because the kids, his older brothers and sisters, were out to school. Hmm. Annual Tournament of Mushrooms Parade. It was really fun to sit in the theater and uh, hear the children react to the movie I made, I must say. And one, one of the scenes, Big Bird gets kidnapped by some unscrupulous... No. Uh, carnival guys and they paint him blue and when it affected children more than i knew when we filmed it that uh the whole theater was here because they were all crying <laughs>